just two years ago. There were 35 deaths on Sussex County roadways. This year, that number is 45. And if you take a look from Chopper 16, you're looking at one of the most dangerous roads in the county. Guys, we've had lots of people coming in and out today to prepare for the big storm. I'm doing a little shopping of my own. Some of the top sellers that we've had have been gloves right here. We've had tons of shovels being sold. And of course, we've had lots of salt. We took a drive today to check out the roadways. All right, now as we pull up at a red light, I just want to describe some of the roads we're facing. Now, Return Day is all about traditions that are, at times, somewhat bizarre. Not only do they bury the hatchet, but they also have the mayors gather and they throw the hatchet. Let's see how I do. Not great. All the games will be played right here at the Cape Henlopen High School, and it's all about bringing in some of the best talent from across the country. That means, hopefully, a little better than me. Miriam Ramirez of Seaford says domestic violence has long been a part of her life. The past was very difficult because for me, I looked at it like it wasn't a problem. They're saying race is also playing a big part in this discussion, right? Yeah, it really is. If you just look at the African American population, for example, they make up about 30% of the school population. However, about 60% of the suspensions, this is what we're talking about, a quarter, just 25 cents. But if you multiply this by hundreds of thousands of parked cars each summer, this quarter go a long way. Paul, oh, there was clapping, there was booing, and there was even heckling at times inside of this room. And honestly, nobody but those five council members knew how the vote was going to go. Outside, he admits that it's gold. However, he says, so far it's not bad. I didn't even wear a jacket because I figured it wouldn't be too bad. I have a vest though. Sir, you're crazy. I know, a little bit. Meanwhile, here at the Millville Fire Hall, the snowman is out for the cold temperatures, and they know more than many that the cold weather can mean real dangers when you're out there battling a fire. And take last week as an example. For most days last week, Sussex County had just about 10 accidents a day. But on Thursday, when that bitter cold set in, that number was 26, including one accident with three Woodbridge school buses involved. The whole debate is about 15 miles per hour. And if you take a look from Chopper 16, we can try to illustrate what the debate is all about. Cape students are already able to do work at home using their iPads. This is one of the main apps they're using. It's called Schoology. It allows them to get access to all the content they need, whether they're here at school or right here on the couch. And if you take a look at the numbers, there's no question as to why they're concerned with safety. Within a tenth of a mile of this intersection, there have been 122 to crashes over the last 10 years. And as with any community, the number of opinions within the Hispanic community is vast. But nonetheless, throughout my conversation, there are certain key themes that kept popping up. It's a real art form. Watching Antonio Perez make a pizza at Caruso's in Georgetown, you might imagine an upbringing in a small Italian village. But alas, he's not immigrating from Mexico. And although about 40 miles from policy decisions in Dover, I asked him what issues matter most for his community. Family was the most important to him. Second, he said, is job creation. When a person doesn't work, they can't provide for their family. Sometimes, although they want to work, there are no jobs. When the economy is down, they can't do anything about it. Colleague Cesar Augusto Hernandez Yoke says the issues go beyond the wallet. There's the right to obtain a driver's license. I think it's one of the important issues. The other two are health care and education. Meanwhile, at Supermarquense on Race Street, Rafael Ortiz says it can all be summed up by just one word. Respect. Respect from one person to another, whether towards young people or towards the adults. That would support the Hispanic community. Voices of the Hispanic community turning their eyes towards policy. Now, according to the United States Census Bureau, Hispanics make up about 9% of the population here in Delaware. And with the Hispanic population growing faster than the general population, that, uh, you can be sure that that number is going to increase here in the first state. His name was William McCafferty, but many around here knew him affectionately as Uncle Billy. And at this Valero that you could see over my right shoulder, like clockwork, he would come in almost every day to get a coffee and a pumpkin pie. Today, they knew something was wrong when he didn't come in a long grief-stricken embrace amongst family members as they mourned the loss of their father and grandfather, William McCafferty. At the site of the crash, his grandson tells us about his grandfather. He was just an all-around kind of man and he loved his family. I mean, that was the most important thing to him. I just hope that he went peacefully and didn't have to suffer at all. The accident happened here in the Lewis area, just east of the intersection of Route 24 and Camp Arrowhead Road. 
and this is not the first accident in the area. The Office of Highway Safety doesn't have 2014 numbers, but between 2011 and 2013, there were 158 crashes between Camp Arrowhead Road and Route 1. 15, that's pretty daggone good. Susan Schenkel, an employee at the General Store in the Peddler's Village Shopping Center, says the road can be described in just two words. Busy and dangerous. We always have something going on. There's always an accident, always something. So now many like Schenkel are calling for road improvements, and the Department of Transportation of Delaware says it's hearing these concerns. DelDOT officials say this intersection is one of many on Route 24 that need safety improvements. The department tells WBOC that preliminary engineering could start as soon as fiscal year 2016, and construction could start by 2019 if the funding remains available. That work would include additional turn lanes and pedestrian improvements. Route 24 is a mess. Back at the general store, resident Sonia Johnson says she hopes the most recent accident can lead to a change. They really need it because he's not the only person that's been hit there. Now, according to DelDOT, that construction date of uh, 2019 could be sooner or later. All of that will have to do with funding. In Sussex County, this is Evan Kozloff for WBSC News in Lewis. All right. Paul, I'm fortunate enough to now be inside where it's nice and warm, but just take a look at how many layers I was wearing earlier today. Of course, I had the black WBOC fleece, had the pea coat, and on top of that, I had the hat and the scarf. I think many of you guys were probably wearing something similar. Frankly, Paul, I'm glad I had every single one of those layers. But a lot of chicken farmers tell me that staying inside is a luxury they often just don't have. Nothing we can do right now until the snow leaves. The life of a chicken uh, farmer, normally, always busy. We either have the chickens to take care of or you're trying to get ready for chickens. It's, you never really have any time off. And when it gets cold like this, what's it like working this job? It just makes everything that much harder. For example, take the fans. It's literally cold enough that we have icicles. That's correct. What can that do to these fans? Uh, if it gets heavy enough, it could uh, weigh them down, but uh, mainly it's just the, the threat of freezing the fan or the shutter so that it doesn't get proper airflow. And here we go. Yes. And if those fans don't work, the chickens inside can die. And speaking of those chickens, just getting their food delivered can be a challenge as well in the cold. Yesterday the lane was clear and the feed truck came in. And then we had a little bit of snow last night, and as you can see, the wind has drifted snow back in the lane, so that'll have to be plowed out again before the feed truck comes or the propane truck. Meanwhile, here inside the chicken house, one thing you'll find out pretty quickly, kind of hard to see me, right? That's because of all the fog that forms on the camera, because inside here, it's about 80 degrees, and maintaining that temperature can be difficult when it feels like zero outside. And with 25,000 chickens in this chicken house, any mistakes can be costly. Despite all the obstacles when it gets cold, would you rather be doing anything else? No, the, this is what I enjoy doing. I've, I've done it almost all my life, and uh, I can't imagine doing any, anything else. All right, now one more thing about the cold. We all pay a little more for our heating during the winter, but picture that for a full-size chicken house. As you can imagine, Truett says his costs are way up. 